Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about uh, some books that I read. Not a specific book, but um, it's the end of the month, so I wanted to do the usual wrap-up and TBR video. Uh, for the month of January, I think books were pretty poppin', as, as the youth say. Um, a lot of good reads that I didn't expect to be uh, high quality, but ended up being pretty darn good. Um, not so many, you know, bad books or anything like that, but uh, some of them were, were misses for me. Uh, so yeah, um, a very good time in, in January, and I have a lot of uh, books to look forward to for the month of February, uh, including some that I don't think you might expect, uh, but were on my, uh, my TBR for the month of 2023, so I'm working my way through that. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, let's do the wrap-up and TBR. I, of course, I'll do the wrap-up first, followed by the TBR, and we will move on from there. So in January, what did I read? In terms of books, I read The BFG, The Big Friendly Giant by Roald Dahl, which I thought was bad. It was kind of racist. It was very repetitive, uh, even for a, a, a sort of a children, young adult uh, story. It, it wasn't very good. Uh, and um, like the like the like I, I was comparing it to some other doll books I've read before, including Matilda, which is uh, superior to this one. So uh, a bit of a letdown and it makes me not want to return to doll for quite some time, which is which is unfortunate. but uh, if you're if you're gonna read some doll, make sure it's not um, uh, BFG because that could be a real letdown for you. I also read uh, The Dwarf by Par Lockerfist, which was really good. Um, a very interesting sort of introspective novel about the, the uh, inner emotions and thought processes of a marginalized uh, dwarf character uh, who um, is the subject of a royal court. Uh, I, I thought there was a lot uh, to be explored with religion and nihilism. Uh, it, it's probably not a read for everyone since the dwarf character is so negative and and kind of a, a bad person overall. But uh, it, it's really interesting if you view this through the lens of marginalization and through the lens of like frustration with that marginalization. Uh, it, it could be... Um, uh, really worth exploring there. Uh, so I think that's one of my recommends for this month. I also read Believing by Anita Hill, which was good. Uh, a very interesting exploration of the deep systemic problems that allow misogyny and sexism and sexual harassment to flourish in America, uh, as well as all over the world, if you, if you think about it. Uh, I do like that it was Anita Hill kind of guiding us through this, that she's personally been through the ringer with, uh, with um, uh, you know, sex discrimination discrimination in the United States. And there was a lot to explore there, uh, looking at the deep systemic roots of the problem. Although I do think that uh, she kind of covered some area that that's already been treaded before. Uh, so kind of being repetitive. Although this is a very interesting book if you're a beginner. Uh, but if you're someone who's more knowledgeable, some of it might be just covered area. Um, and uh, it, it might feel like it's not worth your time in that regard. But uh, I, I do think she covers enough new area and, and connects these idea, uh, ideas that, that make it worth it overall. And then I also read uh, Swamp Thing Volume 5 by Alan Moore, which I thought was excellent. It probably would have been the best of the month had it not been for certain other books that I read during the course of January. Uh, I thought it was a really good exploration of, of Swamp Thing, again, exploring Swamp Thing and Abby's relationship, as well as... Um, having a really amazing fight scene between Batman and uh, Swamp Thing. 
uh, sort of showing Batman in a different sort of fascist light as he is a a superhero for the state working with the police. And that's stuff that Alan Moore has talked about before, so I don't think it's too much of a leap to to kind of indicate that that was what uh, Alan Moore might might have been trying to get at. I do think the ending was a bit um, unusual in, in that Swamp Thing dies and is ends up on another planet. Uh, I don't quite know how Alan Moore is going to like finish this off in Volume 6. I look forward to it, but uh, it it seems like this is a lot to juggle, especially for a talented writer without it coming off a bit hack. Is, is Swamp Thing just going to return to Earth? It's, uh, it's, not, it's not quite clear, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I also read Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I, lo- I love the story and how it was um, an exploration of the the various characters who live in the Tortilla Flat area of Monterey, uh, exploring their sort of uh, early proto-hippie vagrant lifestyle uh, and how uh, sometimes people don't have bonds uh, to keep them tethered for a reason, like they're they're not the kind of person who likes being indebted to other people, or ha- being uh, or having the massive responsibility of owning a home or something like that. Uh, and um, th- this seems to be a common theme with what John Steinbeck writes about these sort of vagrant um, uh, kind of nomadic people who move from town to town looking for work and uh like you could argue that that's kind of what the grapes of wrath and uh um and uh of mice and men uh, are about and even in dubious battle kind of migrant people and he's only exploring you know capitalism all of those things because they come into conflict with uh with capitalism whereas before that might not have been such a problem uh, so <laughs> there's uh, there's a lot we're talking about with Tortilla Flat, uh, that especially stuff that I hadn't mentioned in the video. And uh, even though it was pretty similar to Cannery Row, I do think it is superior to Cannery Row because, again, Cannery Row was kind of vague, whereas Tortilla Flat is, is focused specifically on uh, a group of characters that we follow. I also read Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, which was an amazing book uh, and what I consider to be the best of the month for January. A uh, very interesting exploration of Humbert Humbert, as well as the devastating things that he does to Lolita, and really just the people around him. The man is is an absolute mess, and uh, as, as I mentioned in the video, uh, although some people would claim that it glorifies pedophilia and kind of um, paints Humbert Humbert in a good light, I would argue that, it, that it's actually a condemnation of the character of Humbert Humbert, and really people who are like him, because uh, I think I mentioned in the, in this in the video, but there's a lot of people who are like Humbert Humbert, a lot of libertarians who are kind of like Humbert Humbert, who uh, who believe that the age of consent is merely a suggestion and wander through life hurting as many people as they can and believing that they're not the villain of their of their own story even though they clearly are and then like there's some other other things that i didn't talk about during the story such as uh nabokov uh talking about humbert humbert's past and glossing over a few things and raising a number of questions as a result because we learned that humbert humbert comes from an upper class background so you could argue that he's a fail son just a like like a boromir in a um and uh and the lord of the rings series just someone as someone who of great things are expected it ends up doing nothing uh and end up having to move to america because who knows why um he claims it's for research purposes but i think humbert humbert was found out um he doesn't talk to his family much throughout the story and you have to wonder what the exact reason of that uh uh, of that is and if they if they understood that he was a pedophile or if he disgraced himself in some way by getting divorced from uh his wife at the at the beginning of the story a lot worth talking about and i, I encourage you to go out and read it uh again there's trigger warnings for abuse and whatnot which i think are definitely important to consider but that's not going to stop you definitely go out and seek it and read it if you haven't done so already because i feel like there's a lot more that you can pull from it 
And then I also read Nowheresville by Mark uh, Ricketts, which I thought was boring. Um, a weird sort of period piece about beat poets in the 1950s, and it's a detective story. It kind of jumped around to multiple different ideas whatever, without ever staying fixated on a single one. Uh, wasn't a fan of it, and uh, I'll probably never think about it again <laughs> after talking about it at this point. It, it, it just didn't even merit making a video about it. So, uh, you know, just steer clear that story if um if you if you don't if you don't want to be bored by anything and then I also read a number of short stories for the month of January, including Teenage Hate by T. Leopold and Kaur, which I thought was good. Puss in Boots, which was just okay, kind of an okay um, uh, fa fairy tale. Uh, Robert E. Lee is Dead by Daniel Evans, which was really good, probably the best short story that I read in the month of January. Um, and if you um, if you're interested, you should also check out uh, Daniel Evans' book that it, that it comes from before you suffocate your own fool self, which I thought was a, a pretty solid uh, collection of short stories. And then uh, the day before the revolution by Ursula K. Le Guin, which I thought was good. Uh, it didn't do too much for me in terms of story and whatnot, but I did like what. Um, what Le Guin was getting at, some of the ideas, and her writing, which is always high quality. So maybe check that out if you have the time. And then I also read a number of poems for the month of Thursday, or for the month of January, which you can find on my Poetry Thursday videos, including one by Charles Bukowski, a poet that always manages to interest me and capture my attention. Now, what do I plan on reading in February? I have a number of books and short stories and poems lined up, uh, especially because it is Black History Month, and um, I, I will assert that it is important to read, uh, you know, Black poets outside of February too, but I just wanted to catalog them all here, um, or many uh, Black poets and writers here, uh, just so that uh, we could have a conversation about uh, some pretty historical, pretty um, pretty interesting writings that I've that I'll encounter encounter or have encountered lately. Um, I have a number of poems lined up, including White Rage by Carol Anderson. That was a Bevan recommendation that's been on my list for quite some time, so I wanted to read that uh, for the month of uh, February. Uh, Members Only by Samir Pan, um, Pandera? Our Panoya, sorry, my, my bad. Um, that was a library read. I have it sitting over there. Uh, I think it's a, it's a story about reverse racism, which seems a bit, bit weird. I really hope it's better than that because the, it has the potential to come off really bad and be one of the worst books I've ever read, which is certainly not what you want to do going into the book. I, I just picked I picked it out from my library. It looked it sounded interesting, but it, it, there's a lot of bad or weird things it could do on the way to getting from the beginning to the end. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and then I also want to read Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom, a book that I never got around to reading when I was younger, and I am definitely not the target audience for it right now, uh, given that it's it's for, you know, teen girls, girls who are hitting those that, that age of, of, of maturity um, and, you know, trying to understand themselves a little bit more. Uh, I know it's one of the books that have been banned, and there's also a movie coming out about it uh, this year, I believe, uh, which um, I guess I'm looking forward to, to seeing what that's about. But I wanted to read the book first before um, before I moved any any further towards that. Um, so uh, plus plus I'm I'm a big fan of Judy Bloom in general, as I read her her um, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing series, um, and I know that a lot of people highly regard her other books. So. Um, looking forward to uh, checking that one out. And then I also want to read Fun Home, uh, a family tragic comic. Uh, it's a graphic novel by Alison Bechdel, which I've heard a lot of good things about. It's also a banned book, and I, I'm, I'm always interested in checking out those banned books and why we ban it. Um, so be on the lookout for that, as well as the next volume, the final volume of the Swamp Thing, of, of, Al, of uh, at least of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run. Uh, so looking forward to reading that, and then a bunch of books that I that I might find in my local library. Be on the lookout for that as well. I have a number of short stories planned for the month of February, including Blues Ain't No Mockingbird, uh, which I've heard of before but never read, uh, by Tony Cade Bambara. And that name might sound familiar because uh, if you're if you've been watching for a while. While, you might have seen me talk about her short story, The Lesson, which is one of the better short stories that I've read. A very interesting sort of uh, um, 
exploration into the uh, at least of a black character, uh, a young black character, finding out about the economic disparities that exist uh, in between white and black communities. Uh, and then also Battle Royale by Ralph Ellison. And again, I have read uh, Ellison before and The Invisible Man, and I'm hoping um, the Battle Royale is of similar quality. Um, and then a number of other short stories by black authors as well, uh, which I will leave a surprise until we get to that point. And then I also have a number of poems that I want to read for the month of February um, by black authors, of course, uh, including one by Etheridge Knight, who I've talked about on this channel before. Really like his honesty and just blunt nature in writing poetry, not afraid to mince words or, or like sound unpoetic at times, but that honesty is what makes his poems so... Um, so intriguing and eye-catching. Uh, you don't really see what, what he's doing in a lot of other poems. Uh, so be on the lookout for that as well. Anyway, that is what I read in January and what I plan to read in February. If you have any recommendations or if you want to comment on something I've uh, I've, I've read and uh, read before or what I have planned, you know, comment below. Let's have a discussion about books. Um, I always look forward to getting recommendations, although my TBR is getting uh, heavily backed up. Uh, and I do worry that, you know, the Earth might get destroyed by an asteroid one day and, like, I, I won't have time to to read books anymore or something like that. Um, maybe that's the wrong thing to be worried about, but, uh, I, you know, I'm sure everyone has those concerns about not being able to get to their favorite media uh, by the time the world ends or something like that. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get through them all. Um, if, if otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this channel and these authors that I am talking about. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and extremely short month travels. Farewell.